Radio, send, send as many cars as you possibly can. We've got an update. Possible active shooter at the top. There are still shots being fired. This might be an individual with body armor. Additional equipment to the tops at Jefferson, 1275 Jefferson between Riley and Laurel. For an active shooter mass casualty incident, it's go for 21 F20 and B43. Officers that's over here on scene, we're going to have to take off this area and also I notified uh, 9-11 to contact homicide. We have bodies down here. And I looked up, I seen a whole bunch of smoke, and I seen a guy in full army fatigue just shooting, going from left to right, left to right, just shooting people. I can't believe he ki he killed so many people in such a short period. But like I said, you could hear him just walking through the store. It was um, unbelievable. Stuff you see on TV doesn't happen here in Cold Springs. This is the worst nightmare that any community can face. And we are hurting and we are seething right now as a community. The depth of pain uh, that families are feeling and that all of us are feeling right now cannot even be explained. He was very heavily armed. He had tactical gear. He had a tactical helmet on. He had a camera that he was live streaming what he was doing. We pray for those families that they may be comforted by you even when evil is from us. I once was lost, but now I found was blind, but now I see. You know, these were innocent people, just grocery shopping. Uh, uh, a lot of them seniors, um, you know, some that didn't even have the ability to run away uh, from, from the shooter. Uh, it was a very painful, very painful experience. That trauma spread it so fast, it was like a cancer. And I mean, uh, many people say, when you find that you have been diagnosed with cancer, it spreads rapidly. So immediately, once they found out there was a white supremacist who shot and killed 10 people and wounded four, others were wounded also. They were wounded by running. They were wounded by running into um, uh, each other. They were, they were devastated. They were so scared and they were so shaken up that even now we do not have a full count of how many people were in tops. Work has been like hard to do and it's been certain things that I used to do that I don't normally have ambition to do or anything like that, like because it's like hard to even walk outside sometimes, so. But black lives matter, and my life matters. Do y'all know that? Do y'all know our life matters? Do y'all know, do y'all realize that? We got, we, we, this, this is crazy. It's trauma, but when you take East Buffalo uh, and you look at the inequities that were highlighted again, uh, the inequities that exist in so many different ways, it's for some, it's trauma on top of trauma, on top of trauma, on top of trauma. Everybody's still on step one. Everybody still wants to grieve, but eventually we have to, we have to start having some higher conversations of uh, why this happened and why has this happened? Why does it keep happening? And how was it this easy for it to happen? So May 14th shed a lot of light on the fact that the east side of Buffalo has always been not just divested in, but extracted from. Um, and we were left really worse off because of it. It shed light on the lack of equity in our community and what happens when we don't set communities up with the things that they need to not just survive, but thrive. These are the things that made it a rich target. And then when you see the lack of investment over time, when you see 
a city and you, you, you know, that's separated by a main street, by a single street, um, and all they, as they might refer in, in, in southern locations, by the tracks, right, across the tracks, how uh, divergent the economic development is, where you can actually have two ideal, identical properties on either side of Main Street that have such divergent uh, values over time. And you just saw that uh, over time the, the values eroded, um, which led to further se segregation. Who wants to live in those conditions? That, all those things made it so right for someone to come here and say, man, this, this community is isolated. In many ways, it's, it's forgotten. And maybe people don't care about this community. And it doesn't, the lives in that community and everything else doesn't have the same value. What the tragedy did was to remind us there's nothing normal about this. This is abnormal. And it exists because we allow it to exist. And we have to build something different. We have to create a very different type of buffalo. Let's quit going through these situations where we cry and we mourn and we get up for the cameras and politicians say all these things and then we leave the community the same way it was. Funerals, the heartache, the heartbreak, that's the result of this quiet white supremacy, this quiet racism. And so the big headlines come from hostile, violent acts. And these hostile, violent acts create an opportunity for us to see the destruction that is occurring in these other locations and places. And that's the legacy of, of May 14. That's, that's our, our, our legacy. And what we want to be able to do is use this moment to recommit ourselves to the building of, of a society where these types of conditions no longer exist, to the transformation of Buffalo into a genuine city of good neighbors. And I say a genuine city of good neighbors because if you were a good neighbor, you couldn't tolerate the existence of the conditions that we find in many East Side neighborhoods. So we're not a city of good neighbors. That's an aspiration, but not an actually existing reality. And we have to be truthful about that. Not one more! 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 We witnessed an act of terrorism right behind us yes. on May 14th. I want y'all to know that it's time that we stop being Buffalo strong and we start being Buffalo honest. Yeah. Hello. 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 What is happening in our communities is not new. People were starving before May 14th. Revolution. Yes. People were dealing with injustices before May 14th. That's right. So as loud as y'all been since May 14th, I need y'all to stand on that. Yes. I need y'all to be about that. Yes. I, I've asked this question a couple times, but I'm going to ask it again just for my own purposes, so indulge me. Raise your hand if this is the first or one of very few times that you've been right here in this community. And be honest, because we're being honest. Breakthrough, breakthrough. The segregation in our communities is a sign of weakness, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to be about making our communities better, you got to show up. Yeah. This can't be the last time you show up. Yeah. So if you're going to show up, be about it. Commit to it. Yeah. Commit to it every day. Yeah. Talk to your families around the, the dining room table. Talk yeah. to your families at Thanksgiving dinner. Be about it. Yeah. It's time to stand up because if y'all don't, we will continue to be killed in cold blood yeah. simply for being black. And I don't know about y'all, but I got a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. What needs to be done to achieve greater equity isn't fleeting. It, 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 it has to be an ongoing, um, focused, conscious, intentional effort. The change has to be 
deliberate and it has to be intentional. It's not going to be as a subset of anything. It has to be primary. Um, there has to be deliberate investment. There has to be deliberate allocation. There has to be deliberate prioritization to make things happen. Uh, because the uh, conditions that caused it were very deliberate. Um, they are now uh, embedded in our institutions, in our laws, in our policies, in our practices. Uh, so we have to be deliberate. We have seen the organizing and the activism community come together like never before. Um, we have seen our community in itself lock arms around each other like we haven't seen in a long time. One of the things that gives me hope is seeing what is in us, what's, what's in our hearts, what's in our heads. And if we, if we just tap into that all the time, the incredible things that we can accomplish together. Like when people can't hear you speak, but people can hear you sing, you know what I mean? And you just, it strikes a different chord with people. Like the music is a universal language, so no matter what I'm saying, you're getting it somehow. You know what I mean? It was almost like living in between the living and the dead. Like we were like in this weird space. Like I gave my permission, myself permission to die at some point because I was on the ground and I didn't think I'd get back up. I don't know how I got back up. I cannot remember. I don't know. So I already said it's okay, fragrance. You 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 did okay. You lived a good life. It's okay. If this is it, it's okay. Like who does that? Who comes back from that? Like. It's taken a while. It's taken a while for me to come back, you know? Yeah, knowing that you had to literally do something to still be here right now. Like if you did nothing, you wouldn't be here right now. Like that is that thought. If I could not move, if I was stuck where I was, where I was standing, I would not be here right now. It's insane. There are so many people that have suffered from crimes and stuff and nobody cares. Nobody knows. Nobody cares, and you know, I want I want people to know that they're yeah. I'm not the only one. It's not just me. Over a hundred people experience this, and firsthand, firsthand. And to say to people, if if you feel it, wherever you are, if you can feel it, imagine what I'm going through. Like, try to place yourself right next to the shooter. Like, it, can you, am I guys, I can see him right there. He's right there. You know what I mean? Right there. I said I've lived the 45 years of my life over again in the last year. I don't think I'm done, really, because it's just trying to analyze every decision you've ever made. You know, you know how they say your life flashes before your eyes? So imagine that in slow motion. That's what I've been going through. 
when I do have a moment to breathe, when I do have a moment to reflect, I'm like making sure that everything I did in my life makes sense. Everything uh, was the was the best decision that I can make. If there's something that you can actually do over, because you can't do some things over, but if you can, or if there's something you can correct, or, you know, why did God keep me here? Like, I'm still here, but why, you know? You, sh you hate to ask yourself that question. Like, that's a horrible question to ask. But I'm so intentional about how I live, and I was like that before, too, that I need to know. Like, I'm not trying to get all the answers up front, but at least tell me what I'm supposed to do today. You know, should I prepare for tomorrow, or should I just leave that open? You know what I mean? So it's kind of just, it's that thing. You know, that's how you come back from it. It's like really accepting like you took your first breath over again. I did all this over. I was gone. <laughs> I was I was gone. It's like the person I was literally died on May 14th and I am a different person. I'm somebody else. Uh, as we know, my mom was uh, uh, killed at, in 514, and, but prior to that, uh, her heart and her desire was always to be in the community passing out food, and she always donated um, her time and energy to the Good Samaritan Food Pantry. Like, we knew that if we were going to think about a way to honor my mother, this was the way to do it. And so just to see everybody in the community over here are like former Sunday school students who she taught. They're out here. Some of them are helping pack um, bags for the community and everything. Like, and I know like if she were here, like this would be it for her. So I'm just grateful. That's what my mom was. Um, my mom was full of love, full of joy. Um, she would talk to anybody, engage with anybody. You know, it wasn't about um, color or race. With my mom, she just loved people and um, she had high energy. And so, you know, yes, my spirits is dampened with Mother's Day coming up, but also at the same time, I'm invigorated because I can do something that meant a lot to her. And um, it actually helps me feel better about myself and missing her and things like that. What are we doing right now? Because that's what really, that's what community is about. It's about being available to each other when we need them most. And so I'm grateful for all the things that happened, you know, and how the community came together um, after that extremely tragic massacre. I call it what it is. When after 514 happened, just to see the, you know, the shutdown of tops and, um, almost like the panic and I mean they're giving out free bus passes and Ubers just for people to be able to go shop because there was nowhere else in the uh, you know urban area really to go and pick up food so I do think it's very important very important for uh, the community to be more self-sufficient with food and food access but when I grew up in this community if you would have gone over in the Central Park area there were about four different stores there was I'm about to age myself. There was like a super duper a shop a called a Bells. I don't know if you know about that. Super duper Bells. There was a Woolsworths over there. That entire Central Park area were, were grocery stores. And so when you go over there and you see that none of that is there, that's 35 years ago. But 30, 35 years ago, if you went over there, you could go shopping, you know. And so there is a definitely something that that does need to be addressed. It needs to be addressed why we don't have as much in the community. And I know that there are people can say a lot of different things, but as you can see from the people who are here, it is still need, it need, it's still needed. But I'm grateful in spite of everything that we can be a part of doing something because at the end of the day, you know, we could talk politically about what can be done, but what can we do on the ground? On the ground, it's this right here. We may not get a supermarket for 10 years, but we can do on the ground what we're doing right here to make sure that that person who maybe can't get to Wegmans or can't get to Tops, 
that they know they can come here and they can have food for their family here. So it's like, okay, let's do the ground level stuff here first and we'll let that other stuff um, play its course. So that's what we're about. And I know that's what she would be about. And that's probably what she'd be saying to you right now is, yeah, there were things in the past, but let's focus on now. And the now is the people who are going to go home. They're going to have food for a couple of maybe a week or so and if the Lord says the same this is going to be something that's ongoing and while they're figuring things out on other levels we as a as a community on the grassroots level we're going to do what we can do to take care of our community because at the end of the day I'm about to get political now at the end of the day we have to take care of our community as a community that's what made my mom do this for 25 years I believe you know people may not understand how brutalized you know the community was from 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 this incident you know it's rough on the community but at the same time I still look at us banding together and just you know wanting to do things um, that would that would bring honor to her and um, I don't want to spend um, this year you know I'm gonna shed my tears but I don't want to spend it too sorrowful and I want to get into more carrying on her legacy because that's what gives me my power and I think it gives the community strength too when we all get together and do stuff like this. together this event because we have ideas about what we want to do going forward and beyond this moment, but it begins with having an honest and open conversation with the folks that are affected by it. Yes, we are survivors, but there were nine other families involved and, and a community that has been traumatized. Uh, so we wanted to bring together experts that were uh, preeminent experts in their in their fields. That means bringing in folks from out of town, but and combine them with the grassroots effort here at home. It's about learning how to see through the hurt, the pain, the immediacy of what happened. You know the anger, and understand that we're called to love one another. You know this is about connecting disparate people from all walks of life coming together, sharing their experiences, their knowledge, their expertise, and their ex in a way that you see yourself in them, and they see themselves in you, you know, and then you connect, and all of a sudden, we got more in common than not. Uh, that even, you know, people who you don't know uh, have seen the example of what you're doing and the way that you are uh, transforming uh, this terrible moment into a statement that will ultimately allow us to hasten the day in which we place white supremacy in its grave. We're just gonna fight a good fight and pray that somehow some of this or all of this will help stop racism so that other families don't have to go through what we're going through. Because it's just, it's not good, it's not good. We need, we need to stop the hate, okay? We really do. And I don't understand why someone who doesn't even know me could hate me. I don't understand, and I don't think I ever will. I mean, remember where this country came from. Remember what's been done to us generationally. Remember that. You want to remember something, remember that. You want to honor my mom's legacy? Then remember where she came from and how she had to struggle her entire life because she was a black woman in America. Remember that she died not being completely accepted and free. How do you think that feels? Uh, the battle is not against people. The battle is against ideas and values. Specifically speaking to the people of, of Buffalo, um, that that hate has always been there, but now it's out in the open. There's nothing new about the kind of things that this young man was saying about black people. It's always been there. We can't call ourselves good people if we see evil and we look the other way. You can't call yourself a moral person if you see injustice and you look the other way. These struggles are long. 
and that we lose battles along the way. But in the scale of everything that we have endured, the battles in front of us are smaller than the battles behind us. That we move with a particular historical momentum. That we, nothing we attained and nothing we achieved has come in the short haul. But if we are dedicated enough, devoted enough, if we are mindful enough, if we are willing to endure, it's possible for us to win. And it's only through that kind of commitment, it's only through that kind of recognition that we can make sure that none of our ancestors will have died in vain. And in particular, in this community, we do this to pay honor to Mrs. Ruth E. Whitfield, to Pearl Young, to Catherine Massey, to Hayward Patterson, to Celestine Cheney, to Aaron Salter, to Geraldine Talley, to Andre McNeil, to Margus Morrison, to Roberta Drury, to that great long lineage of people whose lives were lost in the course of our pursuit of freedom and democracy. We have not yet won, but in their names, in their honor, in their memory, we will. Thank you.